Berry residents and environmental activists gathered at Berry City Hall during last Wednesday's City Council meeting to show support for relocating the proposed sports field away from Berry's waterfront. Brian Miller, speaking on behalf of the Friends of Allendale Station Park, supported relocation to Barry Central Collegiate Institute at 125 Dunlop Street West. However, he opposed the proposed minimum two-acre allocation for a parking lot at the waterfront. With Mayor Nuttall's comment, deem it for purpose, we recommend that Allendale Station Park be clearly rezoned to a restrictive level of environmental protected area or possibly even a nature conservancy area to avoid any future controversy here and ensuring that Allendale Station Park remains a passive naturalized park that can be enjoyed by residents, visitors and future generations. The Friends of Allendale Station Park have been advocating for the relocation since July after Barrie City Council decided to construct a sports field using plastic astroturf. The group raised concerns about potential microplastic pollution in Lake Simcoe and possible harm to ecosystem due to tree removal. A link to our coverage of the July protest is available in the YouTube video description below. Ernie Evesteins, head of the South Shore Nature Park Task Force, also supported the relocation and opposed the minimum two-acre requirement for the parking lot. Recognizing Council has accepted the recommendations of the report, the task force in a show of good faith would agree to some mowing for overflow parking, but not to the extent of the amendment of a minimum two, ac two acres. A minimum two acre cut would require a cut 36 meters by 230 meters or 118 feet into all of Allendale Station Park, removing vegetation including the sumacs and the trembling aspen woodland. Dorothy McKeevan of Nature Barry advocated for a maximum of 0.6 acre of grass cut area for parking. In the end, at the recommendation of Mayor Alex Nuttall, City Council decided to wait for staff to develop a design concept to assess the necessity of moving space at the waterfront. Okay, folks, we have got here and we have got, I think, a very good plan that's going to support getting a performing arts center built, uh, which is something that I didn't believe that we had two years ago due to cost. I think we've got a better location for you. Um, it's not as uh, big, as large, um, doesn't have as many uh, performance spaces, but I think it's something that we can actually uh, bite into and get done. Following is the video of our coverage of the meeting. We're going to now uh, move on to deputations. Uh, we have four deputations and one emergency deputation request regarding 24G223 waterfront public consultation feedback. So in accordance with the city's procedural bylaw, each deputation will be permitted a maximum of five minutes to speak. So I will call upon Brian Miller on behalf of Friends of Allendale Station Park to approach the podium to deliver your deputation. Sir, you have five minutes. Good evening, Mayor Nuttle. <laughs> Members of Council, my name is Brian Miller. I live in Barrie. I'm here speaking on behalf of the Friends of Allendale Station Park. Our group consists of citizens who reside throughout our city and our neighboring communities. We care about maintaining Allendale Station Park as a naturalized area. And we have been opposed to the multi-purpose field proposed at Allendale Station Park. We are pleased that Barry Council has identified a new vision and path forward in finding an alternative location for the multi-purpose field, along with designing Allendale Station Park as a passive park along with accessible walkways through the naturalized area. The recommendation of a passive park is consistent with what was identified several years ago, maintaining and enhancing a naturalized area, but leaving it relatively untouched to the naked eye <coughs> and providing education on nature. As Deputy Mayor Thompson stated, allowing all residents to enjoy some of our naturalized areas of our waterfront while maintaining the beauty it is. The motion as it currently reads basically directs staff to design a passive park and to ensure the area has a minimum of two acres designated for overflow parking. Our group has a concern with this minimum allotment of two acres of cut grass area for overflow parking for historical events. We recognize that a passive play area has also been identified in the area, but we feel the minimum acreage for parking is excessive. In the past, there has been little to no control with where and how vehicles park in this area. Temporary barricades have been knocked over and or moved. 
with vehicles parked immediately adjacent to Military Heritage Park, these flimsy barricades just aren't satisfactory. During wet weather, the area becomes a field of mud caused by the excessive number of vehicles being allowed in the area. I recognize that I and others may not have raised these concerns in the past, but just because people haven't complained doesn't mean this practice should be allowed to continue. As a city, we're trying to promote active transportation and encourage the use of public transportation. According to the city website, you can park 1,670 vehicles at the Paul Sadden Center which is only a short bus ride away. The Allendale Rec Center and the Barry Curling Club have also been used uh, as alternative shuttle service parking locations. Council should be promoting parking off-site and taking shuttles as opposed to supporting the success of allotment for parking. In saying this, we encourage council to reduce the minimum acreage currently identified in the motion for overflow parking. Our group also requests a zoning change for Allendale Station Park. In favor of the emergency open space, deputation. Which permits the development That's of unanimous. Fields, applicable accessories and it will proceed after the initial four stands. requests. I know why we're here, right? In so past, in accordance we'll with the city's us. procedural bylaw, each deputation will be permitted Nixon a maximum of five minutes to speak. Regarding the so I will call upon Brian Miller on behalf of Friends of Allendale Station Park to approach the podium to deliver your deputation. There is no requirement so you have five for minutes. public meeting or consultation providing that there are no zoning changes needed. In reviewing the current wording and the official plan and its mapping along with the new proposed zoning bylaw, both are very comprehensive and difficult documents to understand for the layperson. From what I have read, it appears that Allendale Station Park has been designated as green space which permits active recreation and or playing fields. Within draft three of the proposed zoning bylaw, environmental protection area also includes outdoor recreation. So one may assume this terminology could include a future sports field. This proposed zoning and what is permitted needs to be addressed and changed. Hopefully you'll consider that. To remain consistent with Mayor Nuttall's comment, deem it for purpose, we recommend that Allendale Station Park be clearly rezoned to a restrictive level of environmental protected area or possibly even a nature conservancy area to avoid any future controversy here and ensuring that Allendale Station Park remains a passive naturalized park that can be enjoyed by residents, visitors, and future generations. Thanks very much. Thank you for your presentation. I'll uh, now invite Arnie Ivesons on behalf of the South Shore Nature Park Task Force. Okay. Good evening, uh, Mayor Nuttall, Student Mayor Sina, and Council members and staff. I'm here this evening on behalf of the South Shore Nature Park Task Force, a collection of individuals who are concerned about the future of Allendale Station Park. This collective was assembled shortly after Marshall Green and Bill Scott released their report, The South Shore, Berry Sports and Revitalized Downtown, and is made up of representatives from First Nations, various environmental groups, scientists, and ecologists, and planners. Mr. Green and Mr. Scott are resource advisors to the task force. The task force acknowledges and is very pleased that Council accepted the recommendations in the aforementioned report to build a multi-use sports field at another location. However, an amendment that was put forth on October the 9th has raised some concerns. It reads in part, four, that development services staff repair a design concept to locate a passive park east of the Allendale train station, and I believe, Mayor Nuttall, you corrected that to Allendale Station Park that night, to include a minimum of two acres of grass cut area to, over, to allow for overflow parking for historical events that will occur on the property and accessible walkways to the naturalized area and report back to general committee the concept and costing. The task force prefers that this area be kept natural and not mowed other than for pedestrian traffic. The city's waterfront strategic plan 2023 deems this area in quotes, eco-education, naturalization, and restoring the meadow to a dedicated oak savanna. Mowing reduces the usable land for such purposes. Society has learned that because something was always done does not mean it was always the right thing to do. A task force member, an ecologist, pointed out that the soil in the tree root zones can be compacted by vehicles and machinery, especially the soil is wet or saturated. Mowing this area also affects resident and migrating ground nesting birds and many birds food source. Recognizing Council has accepted the recommendations of the report, the task force in a show of good faith would agree to some mowing for overflow parking, but not to the extent of the amendment of a minimum two, ac two acres. 
Bill Scott and myself measured at Allendale Station Park last week. The current mowed area along Lake Shore is a strip of 11 meters by 230 meters, or 36 feet by 755 feet, which is 0 0.610 of an acre. For last year's Camp and Fest, the area mowed was approximately 1.5 acres, with a significant space between two rows of vehicles. It also cut an additional 18 meters into the cultural meadow. A minimum two acre cut would require a cut 36 meters by 230 meters or 118 feet into all of Allendale Station Park, removing vegetation, including the sumacs and the trembling aspen woodland. Included is Mr. Scott's map along with photos from last year's Captain Fest and I sent those last week uh, with my request. I'm not sure if they're available. In summary, the task force prefers that the area be left as is with shuttle services, increased transit, and permit signs covered over along Lakeshore to encourage on-street parking for events. In lieu of that, we would ask that the maximum mowing cut stay at the current mowed area of 11 meters or 0 0.610 of an acre for parking and pedestrian traffic. I also submitted a discussion paper that the task force is working on since August in our vision of a naturalized yet vibrant Allendale Station Park. We, along with volunteers and community groups, are here ready and willing to help develop this vital piece of Barry's waterfront for residents and visitors alike. We are confident that city staff, with their own expertise, will undertake this project with many of the recommendations we made and come back with great options. We also look forward to a comprehensive public feedback process on the design and implementation of this. Um, and seeing that I have about a minute or so, and are those photos available or no? I'm not sure who to ask. No? Okay. Uh, they were circ okay, so the public can't see them, but uh, basically I took a picture at last year's Kemp and Fest with two rows of vehicles, and there's a space between that you could have driven transport trucks in both directions going back and forth. The amount that was removed was roughly, as Mr. Scott said, about an acre and a half. So if you're going to cut out two acres of this land, you're going to have to remove some vegetation. And you, the map was also submitted to council that you could look and see. Um, otherwise, if you just stay where things are now at 11 meters in, there's plenty enough room for cars to park and a vehicle can drive behind that parked car and there'll be no problems around that. Thank you for your time for listening. I appreciate it. Question of clarity. So, it, like, what from your deputation? You would like to see what uh, was done last year instead of the recommended two acres as we've requested? <laughs> That's a tough question, Deputy Mayor. Last year was an acre and a half. Um, Basically what happens with the 18 and Mr. Scott's uh, diagram, you'll see the green line is 18 meters going straight across, which is one acre right clear across. What happened last year was they did that one acre, but then they also went a further 18 meters into the meadow area. So last year, that was basically an acre and a half of what was mowed last year, and it's excessive. Um, Maybe I shouldn't say this, but uh, if council would come back and say, the like, concern is, is the word minimum. When it says minimum two acres, that raises a lot of concerns. If amendment was put forth that said a maximum of, say, one acre, then we could work with staff and see, you know, plot out different areas and strategies. As our ecologist pointed out, when you park the vehicles beside, right beside the trees like they did last year, it damages the trees, it hurts them. So we could discuss with staff and say, well, okay, maybe leave that tree line alone and vehicles can park maybe between that and the sumacs and the aspen, the thick thicket sort of thing. So our concern is the maximum ask here as opposed to a minimum. And like Mr. Miller said, if the amendment had read minimum two acres, and again, that's something that we can maybe, I don't want to negotiate, but come to some common agreement with staff. So, um, and what's that old story? You, you ask, for, ask for more than you can get, <laughs> right? So if the amendment was put forth, so you put an amendment that said a maximum of one acre, that is something that we could work with. Is it a follow-up for Mr. Ibsen? Uh No, it, it's actually through you to staff. Okay, sure. 
Thank you. Through you, Mayor Nuttall, to uh, Mr. Rank. Um, can you can you tell us what we mowed last year at that area? Through you, Mayor Nuttall, to uh, Deputy Mayor Thompson. Um, last year, as in this particular past, prior to Kempenfest, the uh, area of rough cut mowing was about 3.2 acres. Okay, and then and then with some of the other data we've received, we've had up to almost six acres at one time too. I think I, I'm only. I think it was in 2007 we mowed about 5.4 or something, so six. So just in and just to just to keep that you know that we did receive and we've been looking at the emails we've received and stuff like that, uh, just to keep the facts that you know true that it was three and almost over three acres last year and we've cut up to almost six acres. So that's all, thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. I'm not seeing any other questions. So uh, Mr. Ives, thank you for your okay. uh, deputation. And I'm going to call upon Randy Taylor to uh, come and make his deputation this evening. Mr. Taylor, the uh, microphone's yours. Good evening, Mayor Nettle, councillors, and city staff, and my fellow citizens of Barrie. First of all, I'd like to thank Barrie Council for approving the motion to approve Marshall Green's visionary plan for South Shore, for Barrie Sports, and the re revitalized downtown. And I'm hoping that tonight, if I have my facts straight, you guys are gonna ratify that plan and we can put that to bed and uh, do a good job for Barry. But I'm here tonight not to talk about Marshall's great uh, plan, more so I'm here to speak about the amendment and the designate uh, to, to remove the uh, two acres of grass. And as a result of that, um, for cutting, to be honest, I was very surprised that council would uh, put that in. And I'm going to tell you why. First of all, residents of Barry have consistently been very strongly opposed to any previous plans to build baseball fields, sports fields, or any other man-made kinds of uh, devices in this area. So the idea to formalize and legitimize a parking lot is not going to be appreciated. And I think, I, you know, like I don't think anybody should be surprised if there's pushback on this. I mean, this, if you're listening to the people they're not going to want that. Now, I'm personally not aware of any initiatives that the City of Barrie or Council has done to secure resident feedback to this idea. I don't know if you've talked to anybody or this was just a Council idea. But the question I have is why wasn't this idea floated at the recent uh, engagement process we had at the General Hayter Community Centre? That would be a perfect opportunity to have asked people that. I mean, we asked them all these other points that Marshall Green had put up, but uh, I don't recall that one being asked. And I don't recall that Marshall Green's plan had recommended that either. So, um, you know, so I, I just find that all sort of uh, a little bothering. Lakefront um, and parking are issues which are only going to get worse as the city of Barrie continues to grow. I mean, this is a beautiful city, a lot of growth projected, and these issues are just going to get bigger and bigger. So my recommendation to Council, first of all, do not use Allendale Station Park as a site for any overflow parking. I say one car is too many unless it's a city vehicle. Sorry guys, but uh, it's, you know, I don't, I don't think we want parking there. Second of all, ask the Barrie Transit Vision Team to include lakefront traffic and parking as part of their plan, specifically with how it pertains to heritage events such as Kempenfest. The solution to accommodating large numbers of people at the waterfront is not just adding more vehicle parking spots. There's a lot of other ways to do that. And I'm sure that the, the, the transit vision team can come up with a bunch of those. Three, direct city planners to search for and recommend shorter term parking solutions until such time as the Barry Transit Visions team is able to produce um, approaches that are approved by council 
uh, to be implemented. So, you know, it's going to take a, probably a little bit of time to put the longer term vision in, but in the interim, you know, you do need some parking somewhere. And fourthly, let the city work with the South Shore Nature Park Task Force to develop a beautiful environmental space for all citizens of Barrie to enjoy rather than creating a parking lot. So in conclusion, I just want to quote a famous uh, Canadian by the name of Joni Mitchell who penned lyrics to the effect that they paid paradise and put up a parking lot. And so I say to the Barry Council, don't you be known as the council who will be remembered as they mowed paradise and put up a parking lot. So I thank you very much for your attention and have a good evening. Mr. Taylor, uh, I'm just going to, I just want to correct a couple of things there, if that's okay, because I think we, accuracy matters. Uh, quote, my instructions from the mayor were that if I was going to recommend that this as part of the South Shore be preserved in its current natural form, that it be usable by all citizens, old, young, able-bodied and handicapped. I challenge certain of the objectors to pick up that challenge. One such response is set out in the sample diagram attached in figure three. Obviously, this was not something that could be recommended without thorough review by the various responsible agencies like the city's own parks officials. However, it does show the potential. I also challenge the same organizations to volunteer their time and seek the help of service clubs to provide the labor. They've agreed. However, there's need to make this natural area usable as the mayor has asked by all citizens. From other work I'm doing with seniors, I know growing emphasis on an intergenerational aspect to service, especially those by government. To that end, I'm suggesting, though not making it formal recommend a formal recommendation, that a part of this natural area, in quotation marks, parenthesis, say two acres, end parenthesis, be set aside for youth. Nothing formal, no fancy equipment, just a cleared area where young people can kick a soccer ball around, play a game of catch, maybe the grandparents with their grandchildren, or some other less formal activity that others who are using this area can sit on a bench and watch. That, that's the Marshall Green Report. So the two acres is in the Marshall Green Report. Not for a parking lot. And the mode two acres is in, inside of the Marshall Green Report. Um, in terms of the, in terms of the, in terms of the use of that, which was what I was going to ask you, is, do you support that? Like, like you're saying, don't mow and put parking in. So, do you support this, but not the parking? I support Marshall Green's um, plan. Okay. Uh, any uh, councillor Hamilton? Thank you, and, and through you, Mayor. Uh, just maybe a follow-up question to uh, Mr. Rankin or staff. So understanding in the past decade and a half, we have cut anywhere from three acres to six acres, from what I understand. Have we received any complaints uh, over the past decade and a half in regards to the cutting that's taken place there that we're aware of? And I know people might not agree with it, it might not formally complain, but lots of people do complain, so I'm just trying to gauge how many complaints we feel that uh, is this something that's coming up year over year? Through you, Mayor Nuttall, to Councillor Hamilton, uh, this is the first year we received complaints related to the mowing of that grass for the overflow parking. Thank you. And, and if I may ask another question, every year then, so knowing that the, the size of the area that is cut, whether it's three acres, four or five, six acres, as we've seen over the past decade, what, what determines or who determines how much gets cut year over year? And I assume that's not just to accommodate parking for Kemp and Fest. I assume that's sort of a, a standard that we do for the year. Or can you explain a little bit in terms of the process of how it's determined what area to cut? Through you, Mayor Nuttall, to Council Ham Councillor Hamilton. Um, the 
area of cutting has been reducing over the years, mainly because of the sumacs and the poplars that are growing into the grassland that's been taking place over the past 20 plus years. So that's the main reason why the area of mowing has slowly reduced over time from six, almost 20 years ago, down to three, three and a bit this year. Um, and the uh, other aspect of your question related to uh, how we make the decision to cut it. It's the staff will go out and, and mow that prior to Kemp and Fest because that's when the overflow parking happens or the main part of it, but they also do it ahead of other events and have done it sometimes uh, for a major event in the spring, maybe for Celebrate Berry, et cetera, if, it, if it's needed. Um, and we usually also were doing some of that mowing later in the fall to knock down some of the perennial weeds and stuff to get some of that seed bank out so that the grasses can come back and there's a little less competition for those. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Through you, Mayor Noto, um, to staff, and I don't know if this would be Ms. Reed. Um, who performed the survey? And I know, like, did it run through your department? I know it was a third party that did the Camp and Fest stuff. Uh, would you have the results of that or be able to just, I don't want to misquote information, but one part of it was one of the deterrents. Oh, you have it, Councillor I think one of the deterrents of Camp and Fest was in a 42% somewhere in that range was parking as as most of the vendors you know occupy the typical parking spots to to perform that because that's and i know councillor hamilton i guess has the report in front of me i have it in front of me here just because i looked it up today it's 42 percent of respondents on the 2024 kempenfest survey indicated that parking is a top barrier to attending and the cause of dissatisfaction with the festival Okay, thanks. And and maybe this just is a quote and stuff. So I think we've also got to look at some stuff and just pulling some numbers. So the, the economic impact of these events that are occurring here. So total economic impact of this year's air show was 11. Deputy Mayor, I'll just remind you that this is a time to ask questions and right. all statements. So yeah. if you want to put in the form or we can wait to the actual debate, yeah. whatever so, works for you. So I actually, you know what, I, I will ask Ms. Um, Schlickler if she could maybe quote or give us the numbers of the economic impact of both of those uh, regional events we hosted this year. Am I going? Okay, good. Sorry about that. Um, yes, I can do that. Uh, so for the barrier share or through you, um, Mayor Nuttall, through to Deputy Mayor Thompson, uh, 2024 air show direct economic impact, we estimated at just about 6.8 million. Total economic impact, so direct and indirect at 11.345. Uh, and bear with me here. I'm just pulling up the other piece of information. Uh, and then Kempenfest uh, provided a report or a presentation to council, uh, and they indicated based on local and uh, local attendee per head expenditure, totaled approximately 18.7 million. Um, for tourist attendee, they estimated 10.2 million for a total gross expenditure of 28.9 million. Thank you. Councillor Harris. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Nuttall. Uh, appreciate the questions and certainly appreciate uh, the deputations to, to this point. I have a question through you to staff, just uh, again to, to really try to, you know, put this back in context. Um, the plan is not, um, maybe through to Ms. Banfield, uh, obviously we're waiting and we're excited to have the plan that will come at some point to General Committee, but just to clarify for everybody, we're not planning on putting a parking lot at this location. We're planning to cut the area and occasionally for these large festivals, use it for overflow parking, but there's no intention for this to be an area for parking. 
through you, Mayor Nettle, to Councillor Harris. That's correct. Thank you. I just wanted to get that back in context because we're we're focusing on the the, the exception, not the rule. And um, but I do like the reminder, and I thank you, Mayor Nettle, for the latitude around the two acres that would be dedicated to that family recreation activity space for young people. And I'm not. Um, Ironically, soccer was here tonight celebrating a success. And I remember when this first came to the table, soccer was very excited about having a field on the lakeshore. I voted against it, no, but I appreciate why. But certainly having a space for young people and families to enjoy that South Shore along with uh, the uh, uh, naturalized area would be a wonderful compromise. So thank you. Thank you. Any other? Uh, sorry, Councillor Corso, you have a question? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, through you, Mayor Nettle, to, uh, I guess, Mr. Rankin or other staff that may be able to answer this. Um, just for as this, uh, this, when this area is used for parking, um, is parking allowed there during inclement weather like rainstorms? Through you, Mayor Nettle, to uh, Councillor Corser, um, in the in the event of a rainstorm, you mean during Kempenfest, if it was pouring rain? Um, I can't think of any situations where we've gone out and actively moved people out of that area during an overflow situation. Um, I may be a better question for enforcement services, whether or not they would go in and, and deal with it. But uh, Just, yeah. Mayor Nettle, through you to Councillor Corser. It the the parking in the informal area is not actively enforced it's not a structured parking area and there are no prohibitions on parking during inclement weather so there would be no ability to enforce specifically because of inclement weather okay that um, kind of leads into my next question which is um how is it parking controlled? Is there security guards? There was a mention of barriers. I just want to confirm if that's correct. Um, because what is stopping people? Because we know that during events, um, particularly I heard of at the air show, about certain vehicles being blocked in and people having to drive over curbs and all sorts of um, shenanigans in our waterfront because of the parking issues. Um, I'm just wondering, is this area controlled by security or barriers to ensure that parking does not bleed into protected areas? I'm not sure who wants to take a stab at that one. Mayor Nuttall, through you to Councillor Corser. Uh, event organizers have some responsibility for parking. Um, if there were situations where emergency access was impacted, then enforcement would address those. But uh, beyond that, um, that, that is the extent of the enforcement. Uh, there aren't designated spaces, so it, uh, it, as an informal area, it is um, not uh, signed for any particular areas. Um, the barricades are intended to protect the sensitive uh, aspects of the site, but um, there, are, there aren't particular security guards at each site all day, all the time. Uh, just to follow up to that, if I may. So if this is um, moving forward as a designated parking area for events only, um, with the understanding that we're going to have a naturalized park, would staff be looking at maybe putting some more protective measures in place to protect the areas that would be naturalized? Is that something that staff is investigating or looking at moving forward? Mayor Nuttall, through you to Councillor Corser, if Council designated it as a protected area, then it would become a requirement through our special events permitting. It wouldn't necessarily be staff that would be enforcing it. It may be a requirement of the event organizer to ensure that's enforced, but it would require specific designation. Okay, and um, as the motion stands now, is that a specific designation in place, or is that something that's going to be coming further ahead once reports come back from staff? Uh, 
I'm not sure I'm the, the right person to answer the question, but at this point in time, uh, Mayor Nuttall, through you to Councillor Corser, I don't believe that's specifically identified in terms of the delineation between the naturalized area and any mode area. It just identifies uh, the general amount of mode area that may be possible to be considered at this point in time in the motion. So, oh, yes. If through you, Mayor Nuttall, to Councillor Corser, um, staff really are waiting for the direction this evening to to take to look at things and take things back. There's no preconceived ideas of, of what that study is going to re report back to Council. We haven't looked at it closely. We're waiting for this direction this evening to, to report back. Uh, okay. Um, and uh, as a couple of other questions, if I may. Um, we we are working, I believe, I could be wrong on this, but it, we are we're currently working on developing better planning for mitigating downtown parking overflow in um, during bigger events, because the air show and other events, as we grow as a city, as we get more popular, as we do want to through tourism, we're gonna have more impact of parking in the downtown core. So looking future forward, um, is staff currently doing any planning um, or any um, investigation of how we can mitigate traffic issues in the downtown? Like, I know that there's discussions of shuttle buses, um, but and it, they're used occasionally, but is this going to be something that will be set in place as practice for larger events? Hey, Councillor, I'm going to ask uh, Ms. James Reed to answer mm -hmm. that for you. Just before you do, I just want to highlight if you support this motion tonight, you're supporting a, an actual reduction in parking uh, down on the waterfront. Uh, Ms. James Reed. Thank you, uh, Mayor Nuttall. Um, through you to Councillor Corser, we, um, we always are looking at parking and overflow parking, um, particularly in the downtown area, probably more focus on the downtown than on, on this area from a parking, um, paid parking perspective. Um, but I did also want to note that we are having a report coming to Council um, end of November with respect to some changes that we're recommending on transit for phase two. And one of the changes does include um, a proposal to bring um, bus service along Lakeshore, which I think will help to address some of these issues that we've had with different big events, and that would be a regular occurrence on a daily basis for transit service. Okay, thank you, because uh, the maximum parking, um, that would be a concern, because uh, um, a maximum as opposed to a minimum um, would uh, suggest, would it suggest to staff that as pressures move forward, would we a minimum of two leads uh, to bleed out in situations where tourism dollars are in play. So uh, would that, with staff looks at a minimum, I'm just wondering uh, what type of leeway a minimum of two acres says to staff. Like, would staff have to come back to council to ask for three acres after that? or four acres, or would staff be able to, after this amendment, to take that forward and use that as they they feel is necessary? Sorry, before you answer that, uh, Ms. Banfield, which amendment are we talking about? Uh, the the um, two, two acres minimum, or two, yeah, mi uh, minimum of two acres of parking. Okay, so just to, so everyone's on the same page here. There is no amendment. That's the motion as adopted from general committee. Ms. Banfield, I'll pass to you. Through you, Mayor Nuttall, to Councillor Corser, um, if this direction is given to staff and we do research and it ends up that um, one and a half acres, as, as an example, is the right number, staff will advise council of that recommendation and council can decide at that point. Um, and I think that that's probably the, the best way to answer and leave things for this evening. Staff understand, and we're listening to this conversation, we understand the intent, um, and we will make sure that council has all the information that they need uh, when it report comes back. So if I may, just to clarify, um, we, we are voting tonight to have a report come back to us to discuss what the report, and at that time there will be more conversations around the table about what the staff findings are, correct? I just want to make sure that um, our, our members of our audience understand that as well. Is that correct? 
Madam Clerk, with yeah. regards to the motion that's being that we're receiving deputations on this evening, could you read out the final piece of it so that it uh, describes what the next steps are? Just bear with me for two seconds. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, to members, through Mem Mayor Nuttall, to members of council, the, all the um, park items, mo the majority of the items in the motion are requiring a report back to general committee. So that includes the, any due diligence work on the Performing Arts Center that, can, that um, also concerns the park, the parkland, the Sea Cadets Parade Ground, as well as the um, the two acres of grass cut area that was requested, so all of all of those items in that motion will be coming back to general committee at some point. And just one last question: Do, do you have any questions for Mr. Taylor? I'm because he's so been standing sorry. for a while. I am so sorry, Mr. Taylor. <laughs> I think you're good to sit down, Mr. Taylor. Sorry about My that. My apologies. Yeah. Uh, just uh, one last question, just to make it all crystal clear um, that so when that that report comes back, we will be able to pull out pieces to discuss. Is that correct? Well, I think the reports are not going to come back in unison. So okay. uh, each item will come back as it's ready. Um, we've said to staff in this what's been adopted so far, uh, please go look at these things and report back on them. That won't be one report. That'll be many different reports. Unless they get it all done at once, which is highly unlikely. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I think that's all the questions I have. Thank you, staff. Any other questions for Mr. Taylor? <laughs> 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 okay, seeing none, I'm going to move on to uh, Dorothy McEwen on behalf of Nature Berry. Dorothy, the floor is yours and you have five minutes. Good evening, Mayor Alex, councillors, and city staff. I'm here on behalf of Nature Berry, founded as a Brereton Field Naturalist Club in 1951. We've been working with council and staff for 65 years, as long as Berry has been an incorporated city, working to safeguard and educate the public about Berry's natural spaces and species for its citizens, visitors, and the next generations. We endeavor to be good land stewards as our Williams Treaty First Nations partners, the Anishinaabek, assumed that we would. Nature Berry is pleased that Council has accepted the recommendations of the Marshall Green Report to build a sports field elsewhere than the Allendale Station Park. But of course, we also have concerns about the motion about the minimum two acres of grass mown. Now, we may have misunderstood, but to us it looked like, because a football field is 1.3 acres, the present mowed area that Arnie and Bill Scott uh, measured was 0.6 acres. To us, it looked like you were replacing um, a football field, a football field with a parking, with a parking area. But I'm so I'm glad I came after to um, have that interpreted. We propose that the motion be changed to either a maximum of 0.6 acres of grass cut area for the parking, or um, that you take out the minimum and maximum. And as we will be working it out with the. Um, the task force and um, the development as to where the um, mowed area will be and at what amounts. I myself enjoy attending the air show and Keppenfest, and but as even as a senior with arthritis, I walk or bike to the waterfront with my extended family or take the shuttle buses with friends because I assume convenient parking is not going to be as, as um, close to the events as it is. If you've ever gone to Toronto, you know that usually doesn't happen. It is not a good climate change strategy to promote driving while mowing natural areas that cool and oxygenate the area. We can work with event and park staff to come up with other strategies such as promoting use of go trains, metro links, and shuttle services that drop off attendees closer to the activities than most parking spots. Per perhaps provide more angled parking on side streets, more shuttle services from other parking lots with EV chargers, because of course that's going to be coming up in the future, and add more bike racks. 
According to the City of Barrie Parks, Horticulture and Forestry Operations Review of October 2nd, natural heritage areas are the lowest cost per acre per year. Mowing is the greatest cost per year, so the city could save money with less mowing. As a city that promotes itself as a bird and bee friendly city, taking more natural areas away goes against the mandates of these designations. Now I'd like to address the problems of mooring during these times for the birds and the bees or butterflies that would be attracted to our native plants in the planned naturalized park area. The air show takes place, and remember, I like to attend these events. The air show takes place in mid-June when most birds are nesting with eggs or chicks. Ground nesting birds such as Savannah Bears, Eastern Meadowlarks, which are an Ontario species at risk have been observed in this grassland area, and as migratory birds, their nests are protected by international laws. We don't want to call in the lawyers. Keppenfest takes place in early August. This year, we found our nest box birds were still in second nestings in August, whose chicks had all died when there was a cold spell in June. The same can happen in a heat spell, causing chick mortality, or a wet spell when insect food sources are scarce, causing starvation. Monarch butterflies are also an Ontario protected species at risk and a North American icon, the only butterfly in the world that migrates for long distances. Its numbers keep declining drastically due to insecticide use, habitat loss, and, uh, and the erratic weather like hurricanes that they probably encountered on migration to Mexico this last fall. The migrating generation of monarch butterflies is just in the egg or caterpillar stage when you want staff to cut them down on their milkweed host and food source plants. So mowing kills them and any other animals caught in the mower's blades. The grasslands you're asking to be mowed are food sources for many other species of bird, butterfly, and other pollinators that need the storage energy reserves that the plants provide to be able to survive migrations of thousands of kilometers or six months of Canadian winter and colder temperatures. There are many smart Barrie citizens willing to volunteer to work with staff and council to keep the waterfront a wonderful place to visit and help rather than hinder the, spe the species we share this planet with. So please change the minimum two acres grass cut area to a maximum 0.6 area acres or take out the maximum number of acres and let us work with staff to come up with solutions. Thank you. Thank you. You got it right on. Look at that. It doesn't happen very often. Any questions uh, from members of council? Uh, I'm not seeing any, so thank you for your deputation. I'm now going to ask Chuck Rattan to come up on behalf of Barry Arts Alliance. Good evening, Mayor, not all, and councillors and members of the public. Uh, this letter was originally prepared uh, in acknowledgement of General Committee's decision and the emergency deputation was filed to ensure that if there were issues concerning the Performing Arts Centre that we had an opportunity to respond. So I'll read the letter. Uh, it's dated October 18th. It was prepared with the assistance of Gary Bell of Lyric Choir. You may know him in other respects. Uh, it reads, Dear Mayor, not all. The Barry Arts Alliance thanks you and all of Council for adopting the motion October 9 to proceed with Hariri Ponterini Architects to complete a schematic design for a new performing arts center at the Barry Waterfront. This facility will well serve the arts and culture community of Barry and area. Many members of the 22 Barry Arts Alliance organizations listed below were present to hear the positive remarks from many councillors in support of this major arts and culture decision. We were pleased to see the thoughtful detail of the motion and its clarity of intent to build a waterfront performing arts facility with two performance spaces, required site due diligence, and a dedicated capital projects manager. We look forward to working with city council and staff and HPA, that's the architects, to produce a well-conceived schematic design and implementation plan for general committee's consideration and of course now council's consideration. Please let us know how best we can work together to get this important job done. And I say once again, thank you for your support and foresight.
Thank you uh, for your presentation. I will interpret that as the just in case get our last uh, please do this in. <laughs> I don't think uh, from what I'm hearing, I don't think that you're uh, going to go home with a sad face. I think you're going to go home happy uh, this evening. Okay, so that brings our deputations to a an end. We're going to move past tax applications and communications into committee reports. Deputy Mayor Thompson, I believe you have the motions. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Corser, that Section A of the General Committee report dated October 9th, 2024, now circulated, be received. It's moved by Deputy Mayor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Corser, that Section A of the General Committee report dated October 9th, 2024, now circulated, be received. This is 24G211, report of the Community Safety Committee, dated September 25th, and 24G212, report of the Infrastructure and Community Investment Committee, dated October 2nd, 2024. Are there any questions and comments with regards to Section A? Seeing none, all those in favour? It carries. Deputy Mayor. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Corser, that Section B of the General Committee Report dated October 9th, 2024, now circulated, be adopted. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Thompson. It's moved by Deputy Mayor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Corser, that Section B of the General Committee Report dated October 9th, 2024, now circulated, be adopted. This is 24G213, Budget Expenditure Approval to Hire Consultant, 24G214, Additional Membership, 24G215, Sports Tourism Strategy, 24G216, Parks, Horticulture and Forestry Service Level Review, 24G217, Parking on Coronation Parkway and Prince William Way in Ward 10, 24G218, Pedestrian Crossing Analysis, Blake Street at Huron Street and Rodney Street, Ward 1, 24G219, Business Plan Status as of June 30th, 2024, 24G220, Barry Performing Arts and Event Center, 24G221, Property Acquisition, Whiskey Creek Culvert and Channel Improvements, the Boulevard to Brevin, Brennan Avenue in Ward 8. And before I turn to uh, the Deputy Mayor, there's uh, an amendment, I believe. Uh, just the Barry Performing Arts Center, Arts and Events Center motion is not the one that I think you're here to support. It's the old report. So I just want to make sure we're not voting on that right now, folks. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Nuttall. Um, I have an amendment. Um, Moved by myself, second by Mayor Nuttall, that motion 24G13, sorry, 113 of Section E of the General Committee report dated October 9, 2024, concerning the budget expenditures above, approved to hire a consultant to amend to be replaced, paragraph one, with the following. Ooh. This one? My apologies. It's no longer seconded by you. <laughs> Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Corsa, that motion 24G213 of Section B of the General Committee report dated October 9th, 2024, concerning budget expenditure, avail approved to hire a consultant be separated and reintroduced as Section E. And I can speak to that. It's moved by Deputy Mayor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Corser, the motion 24G213 of Section B of the General Committee Report dated October 9th, 2024, concerning budget expenditure approval to hire consultant be separated and reintroduced to Section E. Uh, this is just a housekeeping matter uh, that we need to separate this item out. Uh, so I'll call the vote. All those in favour? It's approved. Deputy Mayor. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Corsa, that section C. Sorry, before we do that, sorry. We need to vote on section B as amended. Any comments or questions with regards to section B? Seeing none, all those in favour? Carries. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Corsa, that section C of the general committee report dated October 9th, 2024, now circulated, be adopted. It's moved by Deputy Mayor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Corsa, the section C of the general committee report dated October 9th, 2024, now circulated, be adopted. This is 24G222, committee appointment, communities in bloom committee. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favour? Carries. Deputy Mayor. 
Moved by myself, second by Councillor Corser, that Section D of the General Committee Report dated October 9th, 2024, now circulated, be adopted. It's moved by Deputy Mayor Thompson, seconded by Council Corser, that Section D of the General Committee Report dated October 9th, 2024, now circulated, be adopted, 24G223, Waterfront Public Consultation Feedback. Any questions or comments from members of Council with regards to uh, the motion that we adopted at General Committee last week? Uh, Councillor Kungle. Yes, thank you. I would like to make an amendment, and I've got that in writing for the clerk, specific to paragraph four. Yeah, okay. Um, currently, paragraph four is specific to the section on the conversation we had on the South Shore Community Centre and the acreage of grass cut area to allow for overflow parking. Um, through the conversation, I just wanted to make sure that it would be caught in scope, that we would get back recommendations, including designation considerations. So I have an amendment as follows, and it's only to the very end of paragraph four, um, that the development services staff prepare a design concept to locate a passive park east of the general John Hayter South Shore Community Center to include a min minimum of two acres of grass cut area to allow for overflow parking for historical events that will occur on the property and accessible walkways through the naturalized area and report back to general committee with the concept and costing, including designation considerations. And that is moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Corser. It's moved by Councillor Kungel and seconded by Councillor Corser for Amend language to add at the end <laughs> with the concept and costing, now. including designation considerations. <laughs> you were a doctor in a past life. Um, I'm now going to put that on the floor. Are there any questions or comments with regards uh, to this motion? I'm seeing none. Uh, just before we uh, do, uh, like, Do you want me to speak to it? Yeah, could you? Yeah. I, I don't know what designation considerations yeah. are. So, in the conversation that I heard was um, whether or not parking was controlled, whether or not we had specific permits, um, whether or not it fell under special events. Um, and then I heard that there were there were aspects where, while it's designated open right now, that if we wanted to change that, that designations would need to actually occur through council direction to delineate the area that's specific to the meadow versus this the rest of the area that I think is the area we're aiming at for mowing. So I would like staff to come back with clarity about how would they recommend we appreciate the space knowing that it's zoned opened, but we have interest from the public around the mowed uh, area and the green space versus the meadow. Um, so I'd like to understand how we would look at zoning in different ways. So some people and through the consultation have said designated an EP for environmentally protected or would we need different designations if we wanted to do different uses. So would love to understand while the current designation is open, um, are there other considerations that might align to the feedback we're getting from the public knowing that some of those areas are sensitive? So just, just to confirm... You, what you're looking for is a concept asking uh, and costing, concept and costing uh, to look at potential rezonings of the land. Yeah, so nothing specific outside of what's being asked for, the concept coming back, as well as the costing to come back. In addition to that, I'd like a recommendation or information on designation considerations. for how we treat that space, if we would ever consider changing it from open designation. So to go from open space, I'm going to go to um, Ms. Banfield. To go from open space to something else, my understanding is it's a rezoning. Is that correct? Uh, Mayor Nelly, you're correct. So so when we're talking about designation consideration, it's like we have to be very clear. Like There's a set of laws that define what we can do and can't do, and then we have our own bylaws that interpret those and so on and so forth. So if... The request is to rezone the land, um, then we should probably use that language. 
So through you, Mayor Nettle, to yourself and or to Ms. Banfield, whatever language is most appropriate, I think it's around making sure that what comes back from staff scope with that report to general committee can give us some insight into um, how we may want to appreciate that green space in different ways and what would that look like around different zoning um, parameters or permissions. Okay, so I'm just going to ask somebody... Um, We can't friendly here, can we? No, no friends at council. Just give me a moment here, yeah. So I'd like to withdraw that amendment and table another one. <laughs> okay, there's been a uh, with. Request to withdraw, which I think we're all okay with, and we're going to move on to a, another amendment here. Uh, thank you, Mayor Nuttall. I'd like to uh, table an amendment still to paragraph 4, 24G-22-3, and it is only to add language at the very end of paragraph 4, and I believe through the conversation you understand my intention, um, and that is um, that the concept and costing include other zoning considerations. And that's supported by Councillor Corser as a second. Can you email it to us, please? Yeah. Councillor, just in the, uh, I understand your request, and we want to have these things a lot earlier than 820. Um, but I just want to keep the meeting moving, if that's okay. So I'm just going to read it out, and I'll, and I'll read it slowly, because I get to read it, and you don't have it in front of you. So it's to amend language... Uh, to add at the end, with the concept and costing, including other zoning designations. And those other zoning designations would be at uh, Allendale Station Park. Councillor. Sorry, just one question through you. So understanding that we are in the middle of a public zoning bylaw consultation outside of this, I, I, I'm just sort of confused now. We're starting another process and report when we're already doing that. November 21st, there's a public consultation taking place for bylaw changes in for draft three um, because the October one was canceled when the power outages had to happen. So I, I just, I, I, and maybe I'll wait to the vote to say I, I'm not going to be supportive of this because I, I get really nervous taking zoning outside of the process that's currently underway. I think it undermines that process. So I'd like to continue on with that and, and provide feedback, invite people to come to the public consultation that's on November 21st uh, and make the decisions there. So I don't know if that was a question comment, but. It was, it was gonna start as a question, but it was a good comment, <laughs> Councillor. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Nuttall. Um, through you to staff and probably Ms. Banfield would be the best, because I was thinking the same thing. That's why I was trying to put my hand up a little earlier. Um, it seems very duplicative of the process that you and your staff already have on the go with the uh, the zoning bylaw. Um, I would just like uh, invite your comments in regards to, do you also believe that this is a duplicative motion of something that's already into draft three? Um, and unfortunately, yeah, as mentioned, we couldn't have the public meeting when we were supposed to due to a power outage. Through you, Mayor Nettle, to Councillor Harvey. So just a correction, sorry, the public meeting is November 20, oh, sorry, November 14th, not the 21st, so November 14th. Um, and I have spoken with many of the people actually that are in the audience today about them coming and speaking about the zoning piece um, to this puzzle, because there are a whole bunch of moving pieces in the zoning piece. I do expect that we'll hear more um, from the community on the 14th. At the end of the day, if the motion goes through, we most likely would say we heard about this at the public meeting, <laughs> and so there probably wouldn't be a, a site-specific recommended change. We, uh, staff would uh, most likely recommend that council follows through with the comprehensive zoning bylaw, um, just given where we are in the process. Great, thank you. And I, I'm in the same boat. I struggle to support this. Staff are already well on their way in uh, in the comprehensive uh, zoning bylaw. And anybody that wants to have input on regards to any properties in the city has their opportunity moving forward to separate this one just doesn't make any sense. I have Councillor Morales. Thank you, Mayor Nuttall. Uh, Ms. Banfield, the, the language around like looking at the different 
resources essentially cost timing that it would take to do this like we the city the municipality of the city of Barry we own this land right now correct like right now it's our land obviously so in the past when we've rezoned uh, land that we owned for various reasons uh, usually it's to upzone it for to make it into productive uses not saying passive uses are unproductive but you know what I mean um, we, we have a, we have a meeting we follow the planning process. It's not that we have a different process than the public, but when we are both that, the, the applicant and the, uh, and the deciding factor in line with the Planning Act and other uh, related rules, um, it just follows that process. So beyond booking the meeting and having staff time and all that, um, a lot of the costs, while not zero, are really in-house and it's more about checking the check marks the right right time is that a fair representation or would you like to add some color or clarity to that mayor uh through you mayor nettle to uh, council morales so there is no way to change a zoning on a property uh, without following the planning act process regardless of who the owner is okay perfect um so I, I'm not going to support this either. I, I don't mind in the past. I've, Mayor Nettle, I've been guilty of it uh, at, at council meetings or general committee meetings on like adding like capital projects or you know timing something opens up where there's opportunities uh, to enhance a, a public space or a partnership with a festival, for example. So I, I want to say right away, I'm, I'm in this glass house here. So that's not a concern. The only thing about this is uh, saying, uh, building on what my colleague said, this is a zoning ask now. So it's kind of like a last minute earmark at the council step on a zoning ask, fresh from a very emotional interaction. Uh, the, personally speaking, not speaking for anyone, that's not how I do things. Uh, so um, I, I, would, I was gonna wait it till the amendment fails or not to say the general comments, but I'll interwind this a little bit. Um, I have concerns about being over prescriptive. Um, I understand some people don't want cars to go there. I get it, you wanna make it as passive as possible. I get it. Like I, I, some people have been direct. Some people are trying to go like, well, and, and I love the comments about like supporting active transportation or shuttles. And I really hope those people make comments about the zoning bylaw. Maybe you want less parking requirements with infill projects because those two things are kind of in line. You can't want one, you can't want one and not the other because less parking requirements will increase investment in public transportation. So um, my point being, there's a zoning process that's taking part. I know that right now that has been mostly occupied by people uh, dealing with uh, other types of concerns. But that's a place for this. So last minute on an earmark, just because it's zoning. I don't want to be a, a personal hypocrite because I've done it on capital asks when they're timely. Uh, but on zoning, um, I think it's a, 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 a good good intent, uh, Councillor Kungle. Um, and uh, I just won't be supporting it. But um, we'll see uh, how much engagement we get at the future November meeting. Uh, Councillor Reba. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I am going to support this amendment um, because it's in the context of uh, staff taking a look at should we re uh, change the zoning and bring it back as part of a report. It's not actually doing the zoning, it's uh, taking a look at it and seeing what we should, what is the best approach. I think that's reasonable. And um, staff are going to do a design uh, work with a number of people. Um, and I think one of the things that they, they can reasonably do is to say, uh, should we rezone it? And if we should rezone it, what should we rezone it to? Or maybe we shouldn't. Um, and then after that, the legal process actually happens. And it could happen in conjunction with our zoning bylaw that we've got, we're have got working on now, or it could uh, go by itself. Um, but I think it makes sense to ask staff what our options are at this point. Okay. Any other questions or comments on this? Councilor Harris. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Mayor Nuttall. Um, yeah, I appreciate certainly where we've landed from where this initiative began many months ago. So I, I do appreciate that. I, and again, knowing we have a fulsome process for zoning, I, you know, I had understood that was a place where this would land. And I do appreciate and recognize also in uh, Mr. Green's report, he did make a recommendation on zoning. Um, but I'm just not sure again, as you know, I think we want to provide some certainty for people. I think what's been, um, you know, the challenge for me, and I know that Lakeshore is an asset that everybody has ownership for, whatever, whatever ward you live in, recognizing that it's in Ward 8, this particular part of Lakeshore that's under, under consideration tonight. But I just um, certainly, 
you know, and I and I had correspondence. My first response to back to the the residents on this item was, you know, um, you know, we're, we're staff are preparing a design concept. Um, we don't have that design concept yet. We don't have the details, and I appreciate people wanting details of people having uh, concern about parking and how much parking and traditionally how much parking have we needed to host really important events for the arts community and, and Kenton Fest and the business community in the case of um, the, the uh, air show. So, you know, we want to get this right. And I just um, appreciate the added element of zoning onto this, but I do appreciate that we have a zoning um, um, meeting on the 14th to really go through this and where that would be an opportunity. So maybe just through you, uh, Mayor Nottle to Ms. Banfield, it is, and I think you've already answered this, just apologies just for clarity again. Would this be redundant and possibly um, unnecessary if in the zoning process that recommendation was made um, prior than whenever this report comes, like that, that would already be, be covered. Is that, that potential exists? Through you, Mayor Nettle, to Councillor Harris, the, this piece of property will be dealt with through the comprehensive zoning bylaw, absolutely. And, and if, and may follow up, uh, Mayor Nettle, um, if, we, if we let that process um, evolve in its natural uh, um, rhythm, um, would that then help inform the proposed uh, the, the design concept that staff will be presenting at, at a later date? Through you, Mayor Nuttall, to Councillor Harris, most likely, yes. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, with that, I, I appreciate um, the motion, but I would, um, in respect of the process, and the opportunity to provide that clarity, that we have that opportunity to provide that clarity with the zoning um, at that point. Um, now, maybe one follow-up question. Um, as it relates to the zoning, could we create limitations by by what zoning we chose, which might be create challenges for the design concept? Through you, Mayor Nettle, to Councillor Harris, uh, staff have, have heard, as I said, have heard from some residents, and and what I've kind of focused their comments on is is trying to articulate what they're actually asking for, and have kind of said to them. Just ask, ask for what you want and let staff kind of do that, that back end of how we do it because there are different ways to do that. Um, so today I don't have the best way to, to say to council to do that, um, but we've just kind of said try to articulate what you want and then staff can, can take it away to present back to council to see if, if that vision aligns with what council wants. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, maybe one further question. Um, and staff would have received and seen the same um, recommendation that this newly formed task force has provided as their vision for this space. So that, that's been received by staff. Staff have that? Through you, Mayor Nettle, to Council Harris, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's, it's um, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting spot. I, 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 sit here thinking that we want to create some certainty, but it's early and we haven't allowed ourselves the full breadth of you know, consideration for what this design concept will be. So I don't want to do anything that, that unfortunately limits what could be and then, un, then end, be end up in a position where we're trying to undo something that we did because in the moment we wanted to you know, provide some you know, um, satisfaction for people who are really concerned about this space and understandably so and with all good intentions so yeah i'm i uh i'll wait for your comments bernardo but i'm i'm a, a little uh, betwixt in between on this thank you any other questions or comments from members of council okay um i actually think there's a number of things that are being uh conflated here in the sense that uh, there is the uh, request for uh, two acres. I, I put Mr. Green's report somewhere, but there's a report for two acres, a uh, request for two acres of a natural area set aside for youth. Nothing formal, nothing fancy, just cleared so people can play. 
Uh, that's one thing that's being talked about. The other thing that's being talked about is parking for Kempenfest. And uh, the other thing that's being talked about is how do we keep the largest, most environmentally protected area that we possibly can, um, and that's being communicated by four deputants tonight. I think there's a few more people here as well. And I think that we need to recognize that what we're trying to achieve has parameters. I'm not sure the parameter of a redesignation or a rezoning is the answer. I'll give you an example. So I went to a gala in the woods um, three weeks ago. I picked up MP Shipley and we went out there and we had a beautiful dinner in the middle of the woods and we parked our car or my car um, in a parking lot in the middle of the woods on a piece of property that's zoned protected, right? The entire forest there has been protected. I don't think that council determining, and I th so this is where I agree with some of what's been brought forward, determining on, you know, where parking should and shouldn't take place is probably the best way to move forward. Nor do I think that putting an environmentally protected zoning on it will stop a car from being there. Uh, neither do I think that there is a common understanding of what that two acres has been, whether it's from the deputants or members of council. So what I do know is that we've asked staff to report back. And I think that when their report comes back, I would doubt it's going to come back prior to the zoning bylaw coming into effect. Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Could. <laughs> Mayor, Mayor Nuttall, yeah, it could. Who, who, know, who knows? We're going to get through. Uh, planning is really like date-oriented, so we're going to get through uh, November 14th and see where we go with the zoning bylaw. Uh, at the same token, we'll take a look at, at the, the amount of work involved in, in these recommendations, and so we'll, we'll schedule that and we'll make sure that, uh, that you're aware of the timing. Thank you. Uh, in any event, on whether it's before or after, what we're actually saying is, like, what do we want it to be used for, right? And that's just, that's going to inform what happens on zoning, if there's anything that happens on zoning. But I think it's a little pre-mature uh, to go down the zoning road. Um, and, I, and I do think that we need to properly articulate to the public that what's being asked, what the amendment was last week, uh, did ask for a two-acre portion to be set aside for a park, right? And then said also to be used for historical events for parking. And I think Kempenfest is, what, 50 years old or something like that? I, I think we recently, Stephanie, yes, I'm getting a nod. I'm guessing that means there was parking somewhere along here for that time period, or maybe it didn't actually uh, start occurring here until we receded the lands by, by CN. But in any event, um, we can look at what the proposal was from CN, what the Council of the Day uh, adopted, and we can look at what's on title and I'm sure we can all agree that Kempenfest literally hits cultural events. Like it's literally on the deed. So I'm struggling on looking at a rezoning without Kempenfest being here to tell us what they need. Uh, without the folks from Barry Rotary telling us what they need because they're uh, involved here as well. And then weighing all of those things alongside the requests that are coming from members of the public this evening and then going forth with a plan. So all of that to say, I think we, Ms. Banfield has been patiently listening to, to all of us, public and council. I think that you understand what everybody's trying to achieve. Maybe there's competing interests, maybe there's not, right? Um, but if you could 
when you come back with that report, really articulate the different things because there's a big difference between a two-acre play park and a six-acre place where people are looking to park, right? And there's a, there's a big difference between uh, a, a, a meadow and um, a cut area, right? So we need to clearly articulate that, what the recommendation is as it comes back. And I would ask on top of the uh, request that's been been put here, which I'm, I'm not going to support the amendment, but I but I do want that information back. On top of that, I would also like if we're going to see a reduction in the area that's allowed for parking, uh, something from Ms. Schlichter as well as uh, the folks over in the the culture arts and culture area that tells us what the plan is for parking, if not here, uh, because what I heard. What, and I, other members of council can tell me I'm wrong, but what I heard from folks on the sports field is they don't want the busyness around them over in Minette's Point. What I heard was we don't want a whole bunch of more people coming into our neighborhood. It's already, we've got Minette's Point. We, we're already overrun with vehicles parking. It's too much. And if we're going to say you can't park here, it, they're going to park somewhere. So is it over on Cumberland? Is it on uh, going up Bayview? Is it going into Minette's Point area? Those are the two communities that are closest to this place. And those are the two communities that are closest to Kempenfest. And so I would like to understand if we're going to propose a change in that report that we include what, what that looks like and what it means to, to Kempenfest. In any event, I will uh, call the vote on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment? There's three. All those opposed? There's seven. On the main motion, uh, Deputy Mayor Thompson. Thank you, Mayor Nuttall. Um, just on the main motion, um, I wanted to say uh, to the arts community, and I know I sat on the task force with a few of them I see in the audience, and, uh, you know, we didn't always agree. And, uh, you know, they, they, they went on tours and they seen lots of different theaters and, you know, they, they extracted the greatness of every theater they went to and put it into the, the, the wishes of the Barry Theater. And, you know, and because I knew I would have to come back here and, you know, and try to convince six other people to go along or five other people as the majority of council, it, it was going to be difficult because of the price tag. And, you know, we've seen in the first report and stuff like that. And I, and I remember one of the members saying to me, you know, this is the task force. This is our, you know, shoot for the moon and we'll get somewhere that can work. And that's exactly what's happened. And, you know, and I really appreciated that aspect. Like I was there as a task force member, you know, to wear a different hat but they understood too that I would have to come here and, you know, I probably gained some favoritism from them when I made the comment, you know, we build rec centers for athletes and we don't build nothing for our theater groups. And now we are, this is something that's been going on and kicked around since the uh, Fisher auditorium and, you know, not too much investment in the Georgian uh, theater. But I look at all the aspects here and I think of, the original motion starts with the sea cadets moving to a parade ground and a facility safer for them. I think of all the deputations we had on that night from the sports teams that were in favor of a multi-use sports field, you know, on the waterfront. And then I think of the theater. They, you know, they, they had a much larger theater on Central. And I, and I think about it, you know, the, the sports teams moved, the sea cadets reduced, the theater a little bit smaller, but a real achievable path forward. And I think, you know, we've all made kind of concessions or, you know, sacrifices for the greater good of the city. And, and I just wish that the outcome of this is, you know, from good consultation and, and a process, you know, that was started by Mayor Nuttall to reach out to Marshall Green to start this. 
But I think we need to look at everybody compromised for the greater good of the city. Like we started with something, you know, and Councillor Jim Harris made the comment about we were going to build a field, but it was going to be subpar for, for what we needed. And this process has actually allowed us to, you know, possibly build a really great facility that we can be proud of. Having the theater on the waterfront, I think, gives great exposure to the arts and will drive up the revenues and the participation in it by the location. So it's, I, I want to thank everybody because I know lots of councillors, you know, I, I remember Councillor Hamilton and I, we went to the Bears Den. We sat there and we we stood at Wikis with these great involved people and they were, you know, aggressive, but because they they care about their neighborhood and they're passionate about it. But we did it, and you know, to get a good outcome. So, I'll definitely be supporting this. But I look around, and I, I just want to say thank you because everybody being here, you know, some people aren't as happy as they could be. Some people compromise more than you know they probably wanted to. But I believe that this whole process and everybody here you know, has got us to a good place. And, and I think it's a bright future that, that we've created for Barry. So I will be supporting this. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Any other comments or questions? Councillor Kungle. You probably know what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> so so um, I, I do thank everyone for all the effort and really good dialogue um, based on those that have engaged members of council directly or in different forms, but also I think some of the work that the public may not see, which is good conversations we're having with staff and between each other on, on where to get to here. Um, I guess I'll just note a couple of pieces. And so, I mean, the piece on the waterfront is we've heard through the public consultation a revisiting of things from the past. And so fear and mistrust tied to that too. So I think when we talk about um, the concept that comes back and part of my intention and I think you know I'm fine with where we got to around people feeling that the zoning bylaw is a process it's not to it's not to duplicate that process but if it does come back I think it and I will be asking questions of staff for this and sometimes it's that tricky part of if you don't ask for it it's not caught in the direction to staff um, but it really for me is about being mindful about do we as council fully appreciate all the different be it zonings or designations around this type of sensitive area and some of the mixed uses we're talking about. So if it doesn't come back with the concept and that comes back to general committee before um, the zoning conversation, I think those are important things for us to appreciate, which is, I'll say it, you know, and part of the conversations have been an environmentally protected area doesn't necessarily mean it meets the expectations of the public about what you can and can't do on an EP. And with the majority will of a council of the day, that can very quickly change. And so I think overall, if we're talking about a concept for various uses, it will be important, I believe, for this council to understand what does it really mean, no matter how it's zoned, about what we're permitting and or how we safeguard that space, maybe through things in addition to zoning. So what does a trust look like? We, so sometimes we talk broadly about options for the space, but we might not really understand what does it mean to do that. So. I think there's great awareness that maybe there's something more we really need to be engaging and examining on for particular aspects of this space that might be broader than EP. So I look forward to those conversations and won't belabor it, but do support the motion as it's tabled. Councilor Reba. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, the first thing I want to do is uh, invite our arts community back here at every council meeting because um, the singing of o Canada was much better than um, what we normally have. So uh, please come back every time, every meeting. Um, I, I'm, I'm very much in favor of this motion uh, because I think it starts us off in a direction. We're going to get a lot of reports back um, and we'll be able to look at each piece um, in more detail. But um, I, I think that we've got a, a waterfront plan here that is starting to move in the right direction. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing um, how all these pieces fit together. Councillor Harris. Uh, thank you, Mayor Nuttall. Uh, and yeah, I 
concur with the comments made by um, those who have already spoken. And I do remember uh, the task force and when uh, Mr. Rutan uh, came on the committee, it was not the beginning, it was kind of midway, but you were a force uh, on the task force the moment you arrived and became a leader, so thank you. And, and I echo uh, the uh, comments from Deputy Mayor Thompson. We were like, okay, what's gonna be able to get around the council table? And, and I really appreciate uh, the willingness of the arts community to work uh, in a really collaborative way to make sure that we have a performing arts center, not just a plan for one. And I'm not quite sure how Deputy Thompson and I became the, the uh, card carrying members for the council with the arts community, but, but it's been a pleasure. And you know, we started Theatre Reserve um, you know, five years ago because we wanted to be planful. Like, like we have a plan. We not just have a dream about a center, we have a plan. We're putting money aside for it. So uh, you know, we do have some money and we do have a commitment and I look forward to this being approved. And I also want to say, you know, and, uh, and it was um, noted as well by Deputy Mayor Thompson, um, this um, you know, whole discussion um, came about you know, with the Sea Cadets and the effort to really, a long-standing, many-year effort to move them to a better location, to, to do what they do for youth in our community and also to do it more safely. And it then brought with it the, for, for many residents, the unpleasant possibility of a multi-purpose turf field, which we don't have in our city um, uh, complement of rec facilities to offer. And that came with the concern and, and I really appreciate uh, the residents who spoke tonight with, with concern because we don't have the certainty yet about what that new plan for the South Shore is gonna be. And I, and I appreciate that. That certainty will create a lot more uh, comfort. Um, and for my chair, and, and I remember when the vote was 9-2 in favor of the field, having the belief that time and more en information would possibly lead us to a different outcome. And here we are with a different outcome. And much to the, the effort of uh, Mayor Nottle and um, obviously engaging Mr. Green and then our community in what could be and many exciting um, new opportunities have arisen since that very first uh, motion about sea cadets and field. So, but I also want to focus on the positive. Everybody is left with a positive and, and I don't want to make any false narrative, but if I look at the task force report that was provided, and I appreciate the task force report, 20 acres. Um, and if, if we use the measure that was cut this year at three acres, that's an if, we haven't got the, the uh, projected uh, plan from our staff, that's 85% of that area that will be dedicated to that naturalization, that oak savanna and a tall grass area. So I, th I think, you know, I can see that as a very positive outcome, knowing that as a task force chair for the Performing Arts Center, uh, we didn't get 85% of the seats that we had had, uh, had had to ask for, right, Mr. Rattan, we're close, but not 85%. Um, but uh, so I think that in this motion, uh, from the energy when it was first introduced, and the energy when we had the discussions, and Ms. Banfield's team did a fabulous job of, of uh, providing engagement for our community at the South Shore. There's a lot of excitement about everything on this uh, uh, motion, and I hope that all of the things on this will come um, to fruition. But um, for those who are concerned about the details of the South Shore, um, we look forward to uh, the plan that will be presented by staff and the opportunity to really I dig into that and see what that becomes. And, and again, staff have received and have seen um, the plan and all the work that's been put into thoughtfully considering what could be in that space. So thank you for that. And I will support the motion and look forward to all that will come from this effort. So thank you. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Morales. Uh, thank you, Mayor Nuttall. Uh, I'll play off on some of the words uh, Deputy Mayor Thompson said when he said, like, you know, and he was speaking for himself that he, he doesn't always agree when they have the discussions. I feel pretty similar, like uh, a lot of you attending here, like we don't always agree, and I probably make some of your, uh, some individuals blood boil uh, with my perspectives, but there's something that I know is the case. You usually always know where I stand. Uh, I try not to be, uh, even accidentally, I try not to be, uh, you know, one way or another. I do change my mind, uh, but you kind of go like, okay, well, he, he believes what he believes. And one of the things around that is I don't, I don't want to give false hope. Um, and whether it's this issue or any other issues, um, you know, just as much as maybe on this issue in the past, historically with the arts, because I know this is kind of a, 
there's lots of components to this motion. Uh, you may be been like, I completely disagree. There's people out there that also go like, oh my God, like they come up to me at the grocery store, go like, oh, you said it like it was on, on this issue or another, but I try not to do the false hope. So I'll be supporting this motion um, as, as written right now. Um, and on the logic of not giving false hope, um, you know what, if we get to a situation where a counselor, because it has to be someone around the table, when we get to the final zoning by law, like ready general committee, then council, then approved, uh, likely in January, uh, if a council wants to move an amendment to zoning bylaw uh, on this specific topic for this specific location, uh, location, then so be it. Um, and again, in the like to be blunt, as I always am, and not to give false hope, I probably won't support it. I'm not going to be coy about that. Uh, but I'll go into the meeting with an open mind. Um, uh, there's been times in the past. I don't know how many people. I've watched historically, even on the brinks in different situations, I've, I've, I've definitely have been uh, convinced and, and swayed. But um, I want, obviously, I personally want to follow that process, let the votes fall where they may. This whole thing of like, let's maybe ask staff to look into maybe exploring the possibility of like, that's, that's just false hope. Uh, you guys could be watching the, the World Series right now. You could be spending time with your families. Um, now, to the reasons why I like this motion, so I'm speaking to the motion, why I like it, it is without over-prescription of the limitation of can cars go there or can they not? Besides the fact that, uh, Marinado, you make great points about like even in, in somewhat EP protected land in your experience, like cars still park. Like what are you gonna do? Um, a city frozen in time is a city that gets left behind. I just came up with that on the spot while people were speaking and I was inspired by what they were saying. Uh, and I said this months ago, so for those that maybe watch, weren't watching that meeting, um, uh, you know, as a, as a student of, 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 of my city's history, I've seen the pictures, I wasn't around, but I can appreciate it. Barrie used to be a bunch of tanneries and a rail, a rail line and lots of really good industrious uses, but lots of really polluting. And I'm not judging the people of that time by the lens of today, uh, but what it really comes down to is cities evolve, cities change. Now, there's a delicate balance between protecting the things that matter, the jewels, the, 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 the uniqueness. That doesn't just mean change for the sake of change is good, but being, in my opinion, being over prescriptive and limiting what could be um, is a detriment uh, to the evolution of our waterfront. I believe the process works now. We were going down a different direction, uh, Mayor Nuttall, uh, in, in, in the spring, early summer, and look where we are now. And this doesn't mean that every single time we need people to come here and, and you know, uh, bring common sense to us, but please do. Uh, we do, we do, we do appreciate it. But there is a process, the system works, the checks and balances work, um, and doing over prescription with possibility of open space or EP, those are just, in my opinion, again, over prescriptive. Can EP be undone? Yes, it can, but like realistically, like find me, find me a council that on their own without provincial direction overrode EP. So um, I like where we are. And the plan for parking, I think that's a really good one. And I'm gonna, I, a lot of individuals that mentioned the parking, I don't know you personally, but I'm, I'm glad you made the points about uh, more sustainable like access to getting to Kempenfest, et cetera. Yeah, we need to provide different modes of transportation. It's not a war on cars. It's just the ability to give people different choices. And so as part of staff, I know there was no amendment to investigate the possible ripple effects of parking redistribution. Um, there might be exploration about like, uh, parking facilities, not on the waterfront, but being built. Uh, there's a couple of plazas on a budding kind of a young and et cetera. Maybe they might step up and say, hey, we've been thinking about doing a parkade or something. So there's lots of possibities that uh, can evolve. So I'm glad that we're having um, a worthwhile discussion for that. So um, to conclude, I'll, I'll be supporting the motion. Uh, and I thank people for uh, coming here. And uh, again, it's you, you might not always agree with individual members of council or us as a collective, but um, I think uh, this process is, is, is pretty important. Thank you, Council Morales. Any other comments or questions from members of council? Uh, Deputy Mayor, you have spoken once as a clarification. Actually, yeah, it's just a, a point of clarity and just to keep everything above board, if you don't mind. And, um, and this is through you to the clerk. Um, I was just reading here and stuff, and I've heard a lot about the task force and stuff. Um, just to to make sure everything's done in in a cadence with our new lobby registry, can you maybe reach out to these groups so they register? Because I've noticed, like, that there hasn't been any registry since the fifteenth. Just so it stays all um, because they belong to organizations and. And it wouldn't be for tonight because this is a public meeting, but the stuff they did um, leading up to this uh, 
reaching out to members of council and stuff with can you can we make sure that happens please Three, you, Mayor uh, Nettle, to Deputy Mayor Thompson, yes. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for that. Any other comments or clarifications or questions from members of council? Okay, folks, we have got here, and we have got, I think, a very good plan that's going to support getting a performing arts center built, uh, which is something that I didn't believe that we had two years ago due to cost. I think we've got a better location for you. Um, it's not as uh, big, as large. Um, doesn't have as many uh, performance spaces. But I think it's something that we can actually uh, bite into and get done. And um, I really do look forward to getting those provincial and federal dollars to help support this as well. So we'll need you all to be writing those letters and putting that pressure on going forward. Um, Performing arts to the uh, potential stadium to what we see at the park and even the conversation tonight the cadets like there's a lot um, The potential for the Bay Cats to move uh, Downtown is something that's still being pursued and looked at uh, It is a, a lot of really good things. So I think that uh, number one we should be uh, proud of our community to actually come behind a, a plan and a vision. Number two, we should be thankful to uh, Marshall, as I said a couple of weeks ago, uh, for all the time and effort that he put in uh, to help us along as a city. And number three, I uh, just want to say, you know, it's easy to gloat when you get a victory. It's really difficult uh, to look the lights and go, hey, we need to slow down, take into consideration everything we're hearing, and turn around and go in a different direction. And so uh, I think that members of council uh, also uh, deserve uh, a, a congratulations and, 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 a, and a thank you. And, and thank you for being part of such a, uh, a team that's willing to, to dig in and, and turn when needed. So with that, I'm going to call the vote. Uh, all those in favor? That's unanimous and carries. Deputy Mayor. Uh, announcements around the table. Uh, Councillor Kungle, I know there's an exciting announcement. There is. I'm going to take a couple minutes if I can ask for your grace uh, on that, um, uh, Mayor Nuttall, to celebrate a huge success that we experienced as a city of Barrie over the weekend. Um, I know I'll mention how we'll make time to do some proper recognition of staff, but I did want to formally thank Mayor Brown, his staff, and all the lovely businesses and members of the community of Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island, who hosted um, many municipalities across Canada, but also internationally, uh, over the weekend for the 30th anniversary of uh, Kimmies and Bloom. And uh, we came back. I had the um, uh, privilege of being with um, members of uh, staff, uh, Mona Boyd, our um, horticulture four person who's really been leading in this space and I think if any member of the public has been part of our Kimmies and Bloom committee she's been an everlasting force to be reckoned with around um, putting us on the map over the past 25 years we've participated in this competition. So um, this weekend we um, received our results of the international competition in July some of you may recall um, and staff did a lot of work to uh, show up for us uh, at the um, uh, social center and showcase some of the work that they're doing across departments. And we had judges from Belgium and Hungary with us. Um, and um, on their uh, review of us, we competed internationally this year. We received a rating of five blooms, gold, which is a special mention um, as well for our waterfront strategic plan. And we were also called to the stage to receive an outstanding achievement award for Green Cities. So both very, um, I would say, coveted awards. Um, very graciously, we accepted them. It was a surprise. I think we thought we might have been punching above our weight uh, in this competition. But really, if you have the opportunity to go through the handout that we've provided to all members of council to see the exceptional work that sometimes uh, isn't... Um, spotlighted as as much as you might be aware of so we are excited to um, 
share information soon about um, a gathering we will hold on November the 20th to really put a spotlight. I think it's well over 100 different staff at least that have touched this project over the years. But in particular, I wanted to share that sometimes um, the public thinks that Communities in Bloom is about flowers. Um, and so it is much broader than that. And it really is looking at evaluating us um, on departments around industry, business, private sector, volunteer efforts. And it's on criteria regarding not only our community appearance, but environmental action, heritage, conservation, tree management, landscape, plant, and floral display. So um, I want to recognize... Um, senior staff and your respective teams. And I know um, Kevin Rankin is here today and I know um, Mona's part of your team. Um, so much celebration, I'm hoping. So she brought both awards back. We barely fit them in suitcases. Um, so we're hopefully going to be showcasing that to the public um, on the 20th and talking a bit about some of the highlights that were there. But I did want to close this announcement off by sharing a um, response from our judges about Barry. Barry's waterfront is a crown jewel of the city and preserving the public spaces along the shoreline is a high priority. The waterfront strategic plan includes revitalization projects such as a floral installation at Military Heritage Park, recommendations for 21 waterfront, waterfront parks around Kempenfelt Bay and the planting of over a thousand new trees along the 10 kilometer stretch. And in addition, introducing an improved ecological offsetting policy aimed at planting more trees within the city limits. And while it's always a dangerous thing to thank some staff more than others, um, I also wanted to recognize that the Waterfront Strategic Plan was a very significant document, and considering we've been talking about that tonight and where we've gotten to in public consultation, recognition of uh, Michelle's team on that, and I think in particular, um, uh, Mr. Bradley. So thank you, and I'm hoping people can earmark November the 20th for more information about how we can recognize staff and their efforts. Thank you, uh, Councillor uh, Kungle, and thank you for the work that you've uh, put into it because you put a lot of work into the committee, you put a lot of work into the work uh, that's done by the committee, and you put a lot of time and effort into working with our, our uh, public servants uh, to deliver that. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, yes, it's all of them, but it's also you as well. And, uh, and, and really want to say thank you on behalf of the city for that. Um, also, is, is it a word cloud where you look at how many times you say a word? Yeah. What, yeah, that's what it's called. Like the over under on ecological offsetting be said so many times around this table <laughs> that we started. It's pretty wild. Uh, but it shows you it's getting recognized, and we, we made a change, and it uh, sounds like it's. Uh, it's going the right direction. I mean, I mean, it's better than my word cloud, which is I'll be short or I'll be brief. <laughs> <laughs> so true. No one's going to say that's wrong, okay? <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Uh, who else has announcements? Okay. Well, then uh, I'll go into the next announcement. So, the city has uh, been recognized for uh, our beauty and our foresight, as uh, Councillor Kungle has just outlined. But there's actually, like, it's, we should be blushing. Um, we were announced as, and this is a very important one as well, uh, we're recognized with the 2024 Canada's Safest Employer Award. And uh, that's with the Safe Start Award for Canada's Safest Employee, Employer for Young Workers. So uh, to all of our executive management team, our senior leadership team, our human resources department, all of you who uh, have created that culture, not in a day, not in a year, uh, probably a decade, uh, maybe longer than that. Right, Don? <laughs> um, I want to say thank you. And uh, that's something that we uh, should be incredibly proud of as a city. The uh, other item that we received uh, very good news on that's uh, a rating system is that we've received uh, a double a plus credit rating for another year not only is it uh, being solidified uh, as stable but it's been moved to positive and uh, that hopefully will eventually pave the way for uh, triple a uh, rating for the city of barry and the uh, positivity around this is you know what this is good for debt in terms of the cost of debt, the carrying cost of debt, 
but it's also good in terms of it sends a uh, clear signal to the community uh, that things are well in hand. And that was, you know, we would love to say thank you to Craig. He's no longer with us, but uh, Craig, thank you. And uh, also, also, again, all of our, our team, our executive management team, all the way down, and to you, Council, who's um, taken the advice of our, our experts and this trajectory of positive outcomes when it comes to our rating uh, continues. And uh, I think that's something that we should be incredibly proud of alongside the other uh, items that we've, uh, we've been recognized with. Local Government Week is October 21st to 26th. Municipalities uh, are the level of government that are closest to residents for services that are used daily, including transportation, roads, economic development, planning, bylaw enforcement, community centers, fire services, water, sewage, parks, building, and more. Local Government Week is an opportunity to recognize the hard work of local government professionals. So I'd like to recognize and thank again all of our public servants for providing exceptional service to the City of Barrie and our residents. The City of Barrie is updating its multi-year accessibility plan and age-friendly community plan and is seeking to input from the public to help shape these updates. The community can participate by completing a seniors and accessibility survey. The survey deadline is November the 1st, 2024. For further information, visit buildingbarry.ca slash age accessibility. The City of Barrie's Family Fright Fest is taking place on October 26, 2024 at the Lampman Lane Park and Community Center between three and 9 p.m. For information, visit barry.ca slash fright fest. And I've gone to that before. It's a, it's a lot of fun. The City of Barry is proud to recognize October as the Circular Economy Month and October 21st to October 27th as Waste Reduction Week. For further information or for a list of activities, visit barry.ca slash circular economy and barry.ca slash rethink waste. The Mayor's Annual Christmas Card Contest is open and residents are invited to enter their photos, drawings, or paintings. The submission deadline is being extended to the 30th of October for a chance to be selected as the artwork for the 2024 Christmas card. So please visit barry.ca slash card contest for the entry form and further details. And Sergio, please remind your father if that's okay, uh, as he is a former winner of that contest. Bylaws, Deputy Mayor Thompson. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Corser, leave be granted to introduce the following bill and this bill be read a first, second, and third time and finally passed, Bill 90. It's moved by Deputy Mayor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Corser, leave be granted to introduce the following bill and this bill be read a first, second, and third time this day and finally passed, Bill 90. Any questions or comments with regards to Bill 90? Seeing none, all those in favour? It carries, Deputy Mayor Thompson. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Corser, Lee be granted to introduce the following bill and this bill be read a first, second, and third time and finally passed. Bill 114. It's moved by Deputy Mayor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Corser. The confirmation bylaw that Lee be granted to introduce the following bill and this bill be read a first, second, and third time this day and finally passed. Bill 114. Are there any questions or comments with regards to the confirmation bylaw? Seeing none, all those in favour? It carries. Can I have a mover and seconder for adjournment? Councillor Harvey, Councillor Ritma, all those in favour? We are adjourned at 9.22 p.m. That was the update from Barry City Hall. Thank you for watching.